Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. In this video, we are going to talk about the first process of producing energy inside of our cells, which is the cellular respiration. Well, cellular respiration can be broken down into three phases. The first phase is glycolysis. The second is the Krebs cycle and the third one is the oxidative phosphorylation or the electron transport chain. In this video, we are going to start with the first step, which is glycolysis. So what is glycolysis? The term glycolysis can be broken down into two parts. The first one is glyco, which means sugar or glucose, and lysis mean breaking down. So glycolysis is the breaking down of glucose. And this can happen only by chemical reaction to produce energy, which is the main goal of cellular respiration. Well, before getting into glycolysis reaction, let me introduce the sort of energy that our cells are using, which is the molecule of ATP. ATP refers to the energy store of the cell. As you can see over here, this is the molecular structure of ATP. It can be broken down into three parts. This is the first part over here that is called the phosphate group. And especially we have, this is the first phosphate group, this is the second, and this is the third one. So we call it the triphosphate or the triphosphoryl group. These phosphoryl group are attached with a high energetic bounds. The second part of ATP is this molecule over here, which is a 5-carbon molecule. It's called the ribose. Ribose, it's a monosaccharide. This ribose is connected to a nitrogen base, which is adenine. The association between adenine and the ribose makes adenosine. So the term ATP refers to A for adenosine, T for 3, and P for phosphate. So ATP is adenosine 3 phosphate based, based on the molecular structure of it. Well, as I said before, these phosphoryl group linked with high energy bounds. It means these bounds could be broken and release energy. So, what are the circumstances to release energy from these bounds? Well, we will start with a molecule of ATP that we will put in the presence of water and what's going to happen is one phosphoryl group is going to pop off and turn into a phosphate. So this molecule over here has adenosine and two phosphoryl group. So we are not going to call it triphosphate. It only has two phosphoryl group. So we are going to call it ADP that refers to adenosine D phosphate and over here we have the phosphates and the most important that this reaction is going to release energy so ATP plus water is going to turn into ADP plus a phosphate plus the the releasing of energy. Well, this reaction is called hydrolysis. Hydro from water lysis, which means breaking down. So we are going to break down the ATP by water. The reverse reaction occur if this phosphate back on the ATP using energy to get ATP and releasing water. We call the reverse reaction phosphorylation. So in this case what happened we store energy. Well in the production of energy we normally talk about 
ATP and glucose. But in our cells, we have what we call the electron carrier molecule or coenzymes that they have a vital role in the energy production process as well. The two electron carrier molecules that are commonly discussed in the breakdown of glucose are NAD plus and FAD. So first, NAD plus has a positive charge in its oxidized formula form, while FAD does not. So NAD plus will react with two electron and two proton. So what happened is NAD plus accept the electron. It gain electron. So it's going to be reduced into NADH H plus. We call this kind of reaction reduction. The reverse reaction, that means NADH H plus is going to lose electron and lose proton. So this reaction is going to be called oxidation. So remember, reduction is gaining electron. Oxidation is losing electron. In the case of FAD, the same thing will happen. It's going to gain two electron and two proton, and it's going to be reducted into FADH2. The reciprocal reaction is called oxidation. So remember these reduced formula because they are going to allow the production of ATP and the third phase of cellular respiration, which is the electron transport chain. After all this, let's get into the glycolysis reaction where glucose is going to oxidize into various steps. As you know, glucose is a six carbon molecule. As you can see over here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, six carbon atoms. So we are going to present the glucose molecule only by the number of carbon atom. That's only to simplify the following reaction. So first, when glucose arrives into the cell, it's going to be converted into this new molecule. So if we compare the glucose molecule with this new one, what we are going to see, we have the same number of carbon atoms, but we have over here a phosphate. So this new molecule is the same as glucose, but with a phosphate added. So we are going to call this new molecule glucose 6-phosphate. So glucose, because 6 carbon, 6 phosphate, it means that this phosphate is going to bind to the 6 carbon atom. So this is the carbon number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this is the 6. Now the question is where that phosphate come from? And the answer will be from ATP. So if you remember the previous reaction, ATP is going to be converted into ADP plus P. So that phosphate released from this reaction that we call hydrolysis is going to bind to the sex carbon of the glucose. Next step, this glucose 6-phosphate is going to be converted into this new molecule. So if we compare the two molecules, what we are going to see? The same number of carbon atoms, the same phosphate, but we have over here another phosphate added, but remember this is the carbon number 1. So we have a phosphate bound to the first carbon and a phosphate bound to the sixth carbon. So this molecule over here is fructose 1,6-biphosphate. So what happened? Why we are not calling it a glucose 1,6-biphosphate? You must put in mind that glucose and fructose has the same chemical formula, which is C6H12O6. But the only thing that's different between them is 
that glucose is a sixth-membered ring, while fructose is a five-membered ring. So I hope it's clear. Now the other question to ask is where that phosphate come from? And the answer again will be from ATP that is converted into ADP plus a phosphate. That phosphate is going to bind to this molecule which is in the beginning glucose 6-phosphate. The third step is that we will take this fructose 1,6-biphosphate which is a 6-carbon molecule and we will split it into half into two three carbon molecule each one of them has a phosphate we will call each one so this is the first molecule and this is the second one we will call each one of these two three carbon molecule glyceraldehyde three phosphate so we are going to have two from this molecule over here so it's glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate because now the phosphate is linked to the third carbon okay now the next step if you realize I represented only one molecule which is the glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate just to simplify then so all these reactions that we are going to see happen twice okay next what's going to happen is this inorganic phosphate is going to bind to this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate and the carbon number one so this new molecule over here is going to be called 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate so one that means the phosphate is bind to the first carbon. Three, a phosphate is linked to the third carbon. Bisphosphoglycerate. And over here you can see the number two. That's supposed to mean that we are going to have two of this molecule. In addition, we will have the production of NADH8+. And uh, since uh, we have two molecules, that's supposed to mean we are going to have the production of two NADH H+. The last step is that we are going to go from the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into a new molecule that is called pyruvate. So pyruvate over here is a 3-carbon molecule. If we compare these two, you can see that this molecule lost two phosphates, which are going to be used to make ATP. How? So this phosphate is going to react with ADP to make ATP. So what we are going to have here, for only one bisphosphoglycerate, we have two phosphates. So two phosphate that's supposed to mean they will react with two ADP to produce two ATP and since we have two of them that's supposed to mean we will produce four ATP all these reactions happen into the cytoplasm of the cell remember the main reason for all these glycolysis reaction is the production of ATP so let's try to find out how many ATP molecule that we produced so let's go from the beginning so in the first reaction we have used one ATP molecule we did not make it in the second reaction we also used one ATP molecule and the third reaction nothing happened again no ATP making and in the last reaction we have the production of 4 ATP molecule. Well, glycolysis produced a total of 4 ATP. But since we invested 2 ATP in the beginning steps, I only net 2 ATP. 
those two first reaction they are called the investment phase we invested two atp molecule and the last reaction we produced four atp we should take back the two atp that we used so i only net two atp and also glycolysis generated to NADH H plus in this process and the end product which is two pyruvate molecule that still stored energy the last thing I want to mention is all these steps the glycolysis reaction occur in the presence or the absence of oxygen so to sum up all this we are going to start with the, the location. The glycolysis reactions happen in the cytoplasm or the hyaloplasm. Second thing, the output of glycolysis, what we got from uh, the glycolysis reaction is 2 ATP and 2 NADH H+. In addition, of course, to 2 pyruvate molecule and for the global reaction of glycolysis this is it we have used one glucose molecule and also two nad plus and two adp plus two pe to get two of ch3 co cooh this is the chemical formula of pyruvate so we got two of it Next, then we produced as 2 ATP. We got them from 2 ADP plus 2 phosphates. And we got also 2 NADH H plus coming from 2 NAD plus. As you can see here, we did not mention in the global reaction the protons and the electron. So, in the next video, we will see the becoming of pyruvate and how can we get the energy still in it. So, see you next time.